yes, there's nothing more exhilarating than looking back at the history of females in gaming. Yes, we have characters like Samus Aran, Aloy, Faith Connors, Nariko. A lot of them wouldn't be where they are today if not for the success of empowering women like Laura Croft herself. And I think it's only appropriate that today I talk to you guys about the history of Laura Croft in the Tomb Raider franchise. And no, I'm not talking about her tatas. Not this time. Oh. Uh. Today's video, we're going to be looking at the history of Barbie Explorer for the PlayStation 1. Every 20-something probably remembers the mainstream wave of Barbie advertisements that came flooding in full force in the late 80s and early 90s. While she's not as well-loved today as a Monster High or a brat, Barbie definitely had a huge impact on a lot of young girls and boys when she was in her prime and when Mattel was at the top of the proverbial toy manufacturing food chain. Barbie wasn't just a fashion doll, she infiltrated every aspect of our lives. They manufactured things like Barbie phones, your own personal Barbie Barbie computer, and this. I actually had this. We were even given an abundance of Barbie electronic games for both the console and PC. <laughs> and let me tell you, some of these were absolute gems that I'll just never forget from my childhood, whether it be because I legitimately enjoyed the gameplay or because they were so absurdly bad that my memories of struggling through some of these are seared into my brain ducts. Seriously, you never forget a bad Barbie game. While I have my own personal favorites, a lot of people I talked to over the years had a lot of fun memories playing this one. Barbie Explorer for the PlayStation 1. And people kept recommending this one to me, so I figured why not take a look and see what all the hype was about. And whether or not this game still holds up today. So the game starts off with a really intense cutscene right off the bat. They just throw you straight into the madness with this one. I think I know why people often refer to this as the Tomb Raider knockoff. Just look at this. There is something so bizarre about this opening sequence. Barbie is straight up in a dangerous situation, scaling the temple walls and swinging on vines. And all the while, she's sporting this really goofy, happy-go-lucky look on her face. Like, she's smiling throughout this entire thing like she lost a few brain cells on her way out. She's all like, wee, this is fun. Fun. Like some sort of aloof baby you'd see in a Looney Tunes skit. But it turns out that all this danger was just in Barbie's imagination. As the professor, aka totally not Lara Croft's butler Jeeves, was recounting his adventures searching for all the pieces of the mystic mirror that is on display at the museum. He tells her that on his journey he discovered a map behind the mirror that contains the secret locations to all the remaining pieces that will activate the powers of the mirror once put back together. And then he's been waiting for a courageous experience explorer to carry out the rest of his mission. Professor, tell us the truth. You just didn't want to die, did you? And with Barbie being the narcissistic self-entitled little princess that she is, declares that she and only she will be the one to bring back the remaining pieces of the puzzle. Um, Barbie, don't you like need an excavation team to go with you? I mean, Jesus, even Lara- No, I'm going alone. And never say that name again. And that's the premise to Barbie Explorer, aka we totally did not steal this font from Indiana Jones. And before we step into the game, it's probably worth mentioning that this game has its own fancy training mode to get the player more accustomed to the controls. I mean, that's pretty cool. A lot of older games just kind of throw you into the madness, and with this game being geared towards a much younger audience, I can imagine training mode to be pretty good for... Oh, oh never mind. I didn't realize this was Barbie in the Matrix. Hold on, when did this game come out? Wait, when, the, when did the Matrix come out? Oh, there we go. I thought I I thought I Listen, I really don't think this game needed a full Matrix VR simulator, but here we are. If I'm being honest, having this high-tech training simulator was probably the perfect excuse to cash in on a cinematic trend of the time. Which, by the way, doesn't even fit with the Explorer aesthetic. And also, making it untextured was probably a lazy fix for the devs who were tired as hell with producing this game and just thought, <laughs> leave the 3D mesh, slap some neon on it, and call it a training simulator. The training mode teaches you the basic 
basic movements like jumping, climbing, pushing, and pulling objects. And you don't really notice during training mode, but the limited controls in this game will come to be the biggest inconvenience you'll experience during the actual gameplay, aside from having to look at Barbie's poopy diaper for like 99% of the time you're playing. So once you tested out all the controls, which are by all means janky as hell, you can jump right into the game. You have the option of exploring Africa, Tibet, and Egypt. And all of these locations have that 2.5D gameplay style to it, like you'd see in games like Crash Bandicoot. As a matter of fact, the levels in Africa pretty much look like the devs stole some of the assets from Crash and then just called it a night. This is literally Turtle Woods. God damn it. I always knew that Crash was a no good African. Hey, you were thinking wrong. Not me. And hey, look, they even have that part of the crash level that's got the two paths you can take. Oh, never mind. It's a dead end. I thought this was a game for a second. Barbie Explorer draws a lot of similarities to the early crash games. A lot of these obstacles and items look almost as if the devs just used the same build and redrew or stole assets for their own. Except it feels half-assed and functions quite poorly. I mean, even the font in this game looks like the Crash Bandicoot font. I didn't think it was even possible for a game to pull so much from Crash and the two Raider and seemingly go under the radar to many, unless you had Barbie games in your household. Maybe this is why this one is so memorable for people. Design-wise, it's actually not that bad. Aside from it drawing from obvious inspiration, there is a lot of variance in the different level locations of the game. They definitely put work into making sure the game was somewhat easy on the eyes, and no Barbie game would truly be a Barbie game if they didn't have her swapping outfits from time to time. We've got Tomb Raider Barbie, Indiana Jones Barbie, the Mummy Barbie, Billy Ray Cyrus and Denim Barbie. All this aside, I could totally see myself having a lot of fun with this as a kid, solely because at first glance, I would probably mistaken it for some kind of crash platformer. Oh look, it's those bonus level pla- oh never mind, they're, they're, there's just gems up here guys. Hey, it's those special thingies you can use to cl- oh, <laughs> wait a minute, did Barbie just get hit in the face by a bird? Jesus, look how quickly the rigor mortis set in. That's right, apparently the nature and animals in the background you wouldn't think you'd be able to interact with do damage to Barbie if she happens to run into one of them rather than it just flying around her or something. I don't think I've ever played a game where I had to watch out for an incoming attack from bugs on my way to finding treasure. I mean, they sort of did that in Crash 2, but it had a purpose and it wasn't just a random little non-threatening bug. One of the best death animations by far is seeing Barbie get bopped by a monkey. To be honest, anytime Barbie hits anything, I rejoice a little bit. Her death animation is just so defeating. I like that boulder. That is a nice boulder. I died so many times playing this game, not even because the game itself was difficult, but because the controls in this game are impossible to maneuver for most of the time and just weren't programmed efficiently. And I guess this game is a lot more like Crash 1 than I initially thought. The precision in this game is just its complete downfall. I take my fingers off of the d-pad and she keeps running. Jumping in this game feels impossible, and in Barbie Explorer you have to do a lot of jumping. To jump you have to hit the X button, but the control is so sensitive it ends up looping her jump. And sometimes controls just flat out don't respond, it's either too sensitive or not detected at all. And to make things worse, when Barbie jumps, her character model warps and her legs stretch out awkwardly, making her look ginormous. She like animorphs into some kind of lemur. She even seems to have the posture of one if you look at her model in its resting pose. Ugh. What the? I can't possibly make it up here unless I deploy my special move. The Zabu. Me and you and Zabu. Wait, was this lemur thing on purpose? Why was this the only thing that worked? You can't even do a proper run and jump. You literally have to inch closer to the edge, then jump and press forward in the hopes that you'll stick the landing. Ugh. Oh, and beware of any power-ups in this game. That's right, elements that are made to make things easier actually hinders your progress and controls, like these running shoes. Instead of equipping the character with some shoes that she could easily activate by holding down on, I don't know, the left and right triggers, or even the square button. Instead, finding running shoes activates a timer where Barbie runs super fast, kind of like when you collect all three Aku Aku masks and have a limited invincibility until the song is over. Except, this running shoe time frame is completely useless because the controls already inhibit your movement by a lot, making it hard to get around. But now you're going lightning fast, which only makes things worse, causing you to bump into even more stuff. Okay. 
kind of a, what kind of platform is this? Why are these moving incredibly fast? Oh, well, it's a good thing we have that 30 second power up that slows down time, right guys? Oh, fuck it. Wow, you'd think you'd have more freedom to explore and maneuver through obstacles in a game where Explorer is in the title. We talk about limiting controls. What is this, a ledge? <laughs> I almost forgot to go over some of the bosses. Yes, there are final bosses in this game and they all suck. I guess this game is a lot more like Crash 2 than I initially thought. Oh, come on, <laughs> it's funny. It's a similar case to Crash 2 where the difficulty and fun is more focused on the puzzles and platform challenges than the actual boss interactions. So there isn't really a feeling of buildup once you actually encounter these guys. In Python Alley, you have to maneuver throughout the level, making sure to avoid a large python stretched out on the map. The python is literally like trust in me just and you flat out just run past the dude and that's the end of the level. There's no weapons needed. Well that was super anticlimactic but at least we have intimidating bosses in areas like Yeti Pass. This guy looks like he means business. He's just throwing out snowballs left and right. What a big coward. Excuse me, what? This guy just straight up booked it when he saw Barbie charging her ass on up like she wanted to speak to the manager or something. Well, let's see if we have more luck with the final boss in Egypt. Oh, oh my god. That is some little shop of horror terrifying. Uh, oh, oh wait, uh, forgot my target audience. Uh, ah, piranha plant. <laughs> the you know what? That's it. I'm done. I quit. I give up. I tried. And that's Barbie Explorer. Why did we like this game when we were kids? Because we didn't realize it sucked. A lot of people have really fond memories with this game and games like Detective Barbie. And that's probably because they're some of the few Barbie games where they could be considered above the bar of crap. See, that's the bar. And uh, that's Barbie Detective above the bar with uh, Barbie Explorer. With Barbie generally being geared towards girls under the age of six, not a lot of effort was put into many of their games throughout the years, but some, including Barbie Explorer, stuck out as they seemed to take more risks and actually attempted at being a game kids could enjoy instead of waiting around to go on a date with Ken. What time is it? There was actual effort in here, but the controls sucked. Is this an ambitious Barbie game? Yes, I'm not gonna deny that. I think that the fact that they tried to blend elements of Tomb Raider Crash Bandicoot and the goddamn Matrix definitely helped the game in many ways, but they just needed to spend more time on the controls and other little things like the boss battles and maybe also take some time to not make Barbie look like an airheaded idiot. I mean, what is this face? There could have been so much potential for decent combat with the boss enemies when in the end, all you really have to do is like run around them. They serve less as opponents and more as scenery. The main focus of this game was obviously more so on its puzzles and other small challenges, and to be fair, they probably probably figured boss battles would be too difficult for the target demo they were trying to entice. But seriously, that really doesn't give them an excuse to do this. If not for the poor controls on this one, unless you're willing to adjust and have total patience with this game, it hasn't really aged very well and I don't think it's really held up to the test of time. Which is a shame because if that issue was cleared up completely, it wouldn't be all that bad of a game. And because of this potential that it had to be good, I think that's why it will continue to be remembered fondly by fans even to this day.